and good evening to one and all or should I actually say good morning it's 12 26 in the morning and this is brother Darren Hebrews 9 verse 27 and John 3 verse 16 I've got an upload for you tonight and what I want to talk about or should I say yet yeah, again this morning is antagonists against a nuclear armed Russia and those that are seeking to capitalize against Russia by propaganda theologically in the Russia versus Ukraine war. But first, before I go into that, I want to give um, commendations to my fellow brothers in Christ, my fellow evangelists in Christ, brother Alex and brother Hudson. Um, they and we are involved in Gospel Street Outreach. And I'll be also uploading a video for them tonight which shows the brothers preaching down in Vauxhall, uh, which was yesterday, uh, Vauxhall, London. The area of Vauxhall uh, that they preach in, it's just outside of the train station, has quite a few homeless people suffering from drug addictions, You've also got alcoholics down there, uh, a large LGBT uh, community, or should I say LGBT venues. So the brothers and I preach into that area, as well as several other areas. And I pray that God may continue to draw people into salvation by his Holy Spirit. But back to the matter at hand. So the emphasis that I want to bring out tonight is on entities that line up with scripture Notably, Ephesians 6 verse 12, which says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood. And also, there's passages in Matthew chapter 24, which talk about false prophets and false Christs, which the Catholic Church's papacy also operates from out of that type of premise. But you see what I mean by all of that in just a minute. So the first thing I want to do is take you to an article on Anonymous. Uh, we'll go into the Independence one. And the title of the article on the Independence says this. Anonymous claims a hack on Russia's central bank and will release secret agreements in 48 hours. Anonymous claims to have 35,000 files from the organisation but this is yet to be confirmed now if you're not familiar with um, Anonymous and who they are they're a decentralised international activist and hacktivist collective and movement primarily known for various cyber attacks against several governments government institutions and government agencies corporations and the Church of Scientology I'll now read the article, or at least just some bits of it. So it says this, Hacking Group Anonymous has claimed an attack on Russia's central bank. In a post on Twitter, an account representing the group said that it would release 35,000 files in 48 hours that apparently contain secret agreements. The account has not yet given proof that it had successfully undertaken the hack or that it had access to the promised documents. The Russian Central Bank did not respond to a request for comment from the Independent before time of publication. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to read any more of the article, but suffice to say, Anonymous says this uh, activist organization um this this hacktivist organization are claiming to have hacked russia's central bank so provoking and antagonizing um russia even more as far as this whole conflict with russia and the ukraine is concerned now why is that all important you'll see in a minute when you when you understand the symbolism of anonymous um, the motifs of, of Anonymous. But I'll get into that now and you'll understand. 
So I'm reading from Wikipedia, as I did uh, just previously, but it says Anonymous originated in 2003 on the image board 4chan, representing the concept of many online and offline community users simultaneously existing as an anarchic, digitized global brain or hive mind. Anonymous members, known as Anons, can sometimes be distinguished in public by the wearing of Guy Fawkes masks. In the style, sorry, in the style, portrayed in the graphic novel and film V for Vendetta. Some Anons also opt to mask their voice through voice changes or text-to-speech programs. Now, Guy Fawkes was a Catholic Jesuit. He's infamous for trying to blow up King James in 1605 AD on the 5th of November. Guy Fawkes, a member of the gunpowder plot, was arrested while guarding explosives the plotters had placed beneath the House of Lords. The Catholic plotters had intended to assassinate Protestant King James I and his parliament. So this was a fell conspiracy by a group of provincial English Catholics to assassinate the Protestant King James I of England and the VI of Scotland and replace him with a Catholic head of state. So we have Anonymous wearing this Guy Fawkes mask, which we can clearly see um, this mask symbolises assassination um, for for James, who, who, although he wasn't in any way shape form or fashion uh christian uh in his in his conduct from what i understand uh he was still a, a protestant leaning king and you know uh they tried to assassinate him under this jesuit uh, plot now it says anonymous hacktivism included government agencies of the united states israel tunisia uganda and others the islamic state child pornography sites, copyright protection agencies, the Westboro Baptist Church and corporations such as PayPal, MasterCard, Visa and Sony. Now, in this world of almost vigilante social justice, we might think that this sounds like a good thing. But when we understand that they're literally trying to hack the central bank of Russia and Russia and Ukraine are at war, with NATO and NATO's allies, including the United Kingdom and the US, waiting in wings should in the wing should there be any sort of overstepping past the boundaries of the Ukraine, with the possibility of that leading on to nuclear war, we have to understand what what act what um anonymous are provoking and pushing against the Russians. Now anonymous's slogan is "We are legion." Now, an article on Bustle.com entitled, What Does We Are Legion Mean? says these words to effect. Where does We Are Legion come from? It's actually a biblical quote with some deeply sinister implications. In the Bible, Jesus comes upon a man possessed by a demon and asks him, What is your name? According to the King James Version, the verses continue, and he answered saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. This is taken from Mark chapter 5, verse 9. So Anonymous has that slogan, we are Legion, which comes from a demon-possessed man, as well as the mask of Guy Fawkes, the Catholic Jesuit plotter. So to conclude, what we have here is an anarchist hacker organisation with a demonic slogan wearing the mask of would-be Jesuit Catholic assassin Guy Fawkes hacking Russia's central bank, further fueling tensions which at their worst could lead to nuclear war. The Jesuits were heavily involved with the counter-reformation movement and we now have a Jesuit Pope on the throne in Pope Francis. I'll end there and we'll move on to the next article. And this one's on Elon Musk and his provocation of Putin. So I won't go into the article, but you can see it on screen. And it says, 
Elon Musk shares a picture of himself sumo wrestling in the latest challenge to Vladimir Putin. Now, Musk has been at Vladimir Putin as well. And he's another person antagonising Putin when, for all of his wealth, for all of his brilliance, he should be appealing to Putin just to stop the war and even seeing if he can have some form of conversation with him. But that's not what Elon Musk is doing. Now, Musk is also working on Neuralink brain compute on, on, on the Neuralink brain computer interface, which I've covered before, which could be linked to the mark of the beast beast. And he's goading and taunting Russian Premier Vladimir Putin in war or in a war that could have global implications and yet again a potential chance to go nuclear. Yet he's looked on as being intelligent, wealthy, brilliant, charismatic. Now, last year, Musk also supposedly turned Christian. Yet he's still working on this brain-computer interface, of which his short-term goal is to help people with disabilities, but his long-term goal is to merge man with machine for AI symbiosis, which is virtually transhumanism. So yet again, we have another individual that claims to be a Christian, an apostate Christian, who is pushing and antagonising Vladimir Putin himself, who yet again claims to be Christian. And Vladimir Putin also um, quoted a Bible verse recently uh, about love, the love of Jesus in laying down his life in what he's doing in the Ukraine. Well, let's get into the next article, which is this. I'll go into AP News for this. And this is on the papacy, and it says this. Pope's peace prayer for Ukraine recalls the Fatima prophecy. Pope Francis, and you can see inset there him sat before the idol of Mary, who is in no way divine in the Bible. But it says, Pope, uh, well, it's idolatry. Pope Francis prayed for peace in Ukraine in a ceremony Friday that harked back to a century-old apocalyptic prophecy about peace and Russia that was sparked by purported visions of the Virgin Mary to free peasant children in Fatima, Portugal in 1917. Francis invited bishops, priests and ordinary faithful around the world to join him in the consecration prayer which opened with Francis entering St Peter's Basilica before an estimated three and a half thousand people and concluded with Francis sitting alone before a statue of the Madonna. There he solemnly asked forgiveness that humanity had forgotten the lessons learned from the tragedies of the last century, the sacrifice of the millions who fell in two world wars. Free us from war, protect our world from the menace of nuclear weapons, he prayed. The service was France's latest effort to rally prayers for an end to the war, while keeping open options for dialogue with the Russian Orthodox Church and its influential leader, Patriarch Kirill. Francis has yet to publicly condemn Russia by name for its invasion, though his denunciations of the war in Ukraine have grown increasingly outraged. So there you have it, folks. Pope Francis hasn't really denounced uh, Russia publicly. Um, he's, he's kind of held back. He's done it in a very obscure way. And even when he ordered the prayer for Russia... Um, versus Ukraine it was on the um, somewhat Catholic feast of Lent or, or holiday of Lent which I as a Protestant Christian uh, don't even acknowledge but he waited all that time to Lent before he called for prayer and fasting my friends yet again this is um, this is falsehood it's not true worship. The Roman Catholic Church is fatally flawed. 
so trying to make the Bishop of Rome uh, to have papal primacy and a universal bishophood, um, which came on in stages uh, to, to, to basically try to identify the Pope as being the head bishop of the entire world. And in essence, that everybody should pay homage to the Roman Catholic Church, as well as all of the other doctrines and idolatry, which is false, which it has in it. We see that this is how Rome positions itself. And yet again, this, this harkens back to this 1917 uh, prophecy, supposed prophecy in, in Fatima, which I believe is in Portugal, um, by a, probably by an apparition. In fact, let's let's look it up quickly. Um, so here we go. Three secrets of Fatima. The three secrets of Fatima are a series of apocalyptic visions and prophecies which were purportedly given to three young Portuguese shepherds, Lucia Santos and her cousins Jacinta and Francis Marto by a marine apparition. The three children claim to have been visited by the Virgin Mary six times between May and October 1917. The apparition is now popularly known as Our Lady of Fatima. Now what I want to go down to is I believe the second secret which is this, which is supposedly linked in with the Catholic Church, because the Catholic Church has consecrated uh, to Russia and, and, to, and to Ukraine with the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And this is what this prophecy says back, supposed prophecy, false prophecy says back in um, 1917. It says the second secret was a statement that World War One would end along with a prediction of another war during the reign of Pope Pius XI. Should men continue offending God and should Russia not convert? The second half requests that Russia be consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You have seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go to save them. God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. If what I say to you is done, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. The war is going to end, but if people do not cease offending God, a worse one will break out during the pontificate of Pope Pius XI. When you see a knight illumined by an unknown light, know that this is the great sign given you by God, that he is about to punish the world for its crimes by means of war, famine and persecutions of the church and of the Holy Father. To prevent this, I shall come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart and the, communi the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. So I'll stop there. But basically what this Marian apparition um, it is asking of those that will support it or believe in it is consecration to Mary, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, in order that war or devastation would not occur. Now I'll go into this. First Timothy chapter two verse five says this for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Mary has no mediation or intercession for us at all in heaven. This is not scriptural and it's largely Catholic teaching which casts Mary in some sort of afterlife intercessory role. Wikipedia says this, Catholic Church doctrine supports intercessory prayer to saints. This practice is an application of the Catholic doctrine of the communion of saints. Some of the early basis for this was the belief that martyrs passed immediately into the presence of God and could obtain graces and blessings for others. The practice of praying through saints can be found in Christian writings from the 3rd century onward. The 4th century Apostles' Creed states belief in the communion of saints, 
which certain Christian churches interpret as supporting the intercession of saints. Quite simply, my friends, this is not a do doctrine you find supported in the New Testament or by any of the New Testament writers. End of story. Now, if I can pray to one saint, I can pray to anybody that I think is a saint. And how do I actually know they're in heaven, let alone that they can intercede for me? The answer quite simply is, I don't know that they're in heaven, and neither can anyone convince me this is established doctrine that any of the New Testament writers would have supported. Acts chapter 20, verse 28 says this, Take heed therefore unto yourselves, and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one of you night and day with tears that this would all come. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this image. I'll show it inset here. But this is an image in Rome that is supposed to depict Jesus Christ rising out of a nuclear crater. And it's something that the papacy sit in front of, the Pope sits in front of. Let's read a little bit about it. The resurrection, Fazzini, is an 800 quintal, 80 metric ton, bronze copper alloy sculpture by Pericle Fazzini in the Paul the Sixth. I believe that's the sixth. I always get my Roman numerals wrong. That might be the fifth. If I've got it wrong, people, let me know. Drop it in the comment section. Not great with Roman numerals, but there you go. Brother Darren's not perfect at everything. Anyway, um, it's intended to capture the, the anguish of 20th century mankind living under the threat of nuclear war. La Resurrezone <laughs> depicts Jesus rising from a nuclear crater in the Garden of Gethsemane. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls... This is the great apostasy, the great falling away. It's blasphemy. You're showing Jesus Christ rising out of a nuclear crater, and that is in Rome. You can see in set in a picture there, the Pope sitting in front of this sculpture. Why, why ladies and gentlemen, why? Is the Roman Catholic Church a true church? Can we not see that we're seeing more and more of an ecumenical movement in these days with pastors and clergy almost unable to talk and call this out? Have we not seen the way the papacy is, has been involved or is involved with everything of world affairs, of all world events of recent? You've only got to run Google searches and you'll find it. But I'm going to conclude there. Now, I'll just go back to, 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 to Google. In fact, let's do this. Just to finish off, because we want to finish off supporting the Lord. And yet again, I'm not condemning Catholics per se, but if you can see and know the apostasy, the idolatry, 
Leave it alone, people. Flee. Matthew chapter 24, Luke chapter 21, and Mark chapter 13 warn us that false prophets in Christ would come. We've got false prophets in all communities because of what developed even alone out of the slave trade. We've had cults that have arisen and cast every single white person as some evil force. But the funny thing is this, Ethiopia and Egypt and other parts of the Maghreb had churches and Africans that were never enslaved. They just went after sub-Sahara Africa because it was an easy target and Catholicism had not reached or penetrated down there. But the Catholic Church has worked so much iniquity and now we have the world reeling. We also just had an image or a meme with Prince William and, and, and Kate uh, in Jamaica shaking hands with Jamaican kids for offence and the British Empire were heavily involved, involved in slave trading but that doesn't mean that they themselves are all evil anybody can repent the issue is with say for example um, the monarchy or any organisations or institutions that could be linked with the slave traders, will they make full apologies? Will they give reparations? The answer is probably no. Because of the financial implications, possibly. But everybody has to give their own account to God. Everybody has to answer for themselves. The Bible says in the book of Revelations that the great and small will stand before God. I'm going to stand before him. But I tell you what, I'll do my best and my utmost. Not that I'm saved by works, I'm saved by grace, but I will do my best and my utmost to serve the Lord faithfully. And not to receive the second death, which is the eternal lake of fire. But anyway... I pray for them. I pray for everybody who will repent because it says that judgment will be for an eternity. None of us has chosen our race or our gender. Anybody could have been born a slave master, a Ku Klux Klan member, a gang member, whatever. It's about repenting. If you know something's wrong, come out of it. Repent. Seek the Lord. So anyway, Matthew chapter 24, Luke chapter uh, 21. And Mark chapter 13 warn us that false prophets and Christs and false Christ would come. And there would be wars and rumours of wars. People, listen to sound doctrine. Flee Roman Catholicism or anything else which doesn't have sound doctrine and cannot be established firmly to the first century church, to the apostles, to what they lay down. Watch for signs that are coming from people that claim to, to know or walk with Christ, such as Musk. Watch for these, these organisations like Anonymous that would be so be prepared to provoke Russia almost to nuclear war. Now I urge people, understand and see and know these signs and get to know Christ as Lord and personal saviour. Repent from all sins find a good church, become sanctified and preach the gospel. And I'm going to end the video on that note. God bless. This is Brother Darren, Hebrews 9 verse 27 and John 3 verse 16.